friends and brothers. This is Justin Jones, the founder and co-host of the Masonic Improvement Movement. I'm joined here with Rat Worshipful Dennis Yates. Before we get started with the body of the interview that we are both very excited about, we'd just like to remind everybody, if you find any value in this content, please be sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to us already, be sure to share this video or this uh, this podcast with anyone who you think may be interested. And uh, also consider looking at our membership program for access to ad-free and exclusive content. That said... And the, and the Masonic Improvement swag is now available. Yep. Masonic so, Improvement. Uh, just message us and we will sell it to you. We'll be happy best, to. And the best way to message us is reach out to us on Facebook. Just send us a message. And uh, oh. Dennis will get back to you very soon on that. That said, let's just get right into our video. We are joined uh, this evening by Brother Paul Reyna. Uh, he has been a Master Mason since, since 2007 and is a member of the Scottish Rite since 2008. He is a past master of several Martinist, Rosicrucian, and Golden Dawn bodies. He is an ordained bishop with French, Gnostic, and Orthodox Apostolic, apostolic Secession. And serves as the current Grand Master of the, I'm going to butcher this, I'm sorry, Order of Martinist Sovereigns. Is that is that right? Close? Good enough. Close uh, enough. Order of Martinist Souverain. Order of Martinist Souverains. Beautiful. I, I always have to uh, haggle my my uh, students about that pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. Also, you're, also, you're, in te you're in Texas. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. Like everyone says Rose Croy, right? It's mm -hmm. quiet. Right, exactly. Oh, okay. He also uh, currently serves as the director of work for the Austin Scottish Rite and as the venerable master for their Collegium Ritualis. Man, well, lots of new words today. Ritualist, uh, how Ecosay. you pronounce it? Ecosize? Okay. Ecosay. Ecosay. He writes and lectures internationally on Kabbalah, alchemy, Rosicrucianism, Gnosticism, Hermeticism and initiatory bodies of the Western esoteric tradition. As a translator, author, and editor, he has published over 25 volumes on French, hot grade esotericism and related currents. He is also a sixth Dan black belt master in multiple schools of Martin art, martial arts with ne nearly 20 years of teaching experience, martial arts, and yoga. How do you top that? Welcome to the show. Yeah, I know, family. right? How how can you how can I like how can I take that anything from that and 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 go with it? You know, we we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Yeah, you should be interviewing us. I feel like it should be on the other shoe. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yet we're all we're all on the level. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Welcome to but the it, show. The cool Thank thing you though is on. Uh, yeah, brother Justin, brother Dennis. Uh, Thank you so much for inviting me on to the Masonic Improvement Show. Mm -hmm. um, I really dig what y'all are doing. Appreciate and, that. Yeah. And the more we can to connect Texas Masons and international Masons, spiritually, esoterically, friendships, fraternally is a good thing. Yes, absolutely. I, In fact, you know, last week they had the uh, the first <clears throat> binational Masonic conference in uh, in el paso and they and they uh moved into mexico into chihuahua into juarez and in chihuahua and um so i'm i'm fortunate to be friends with with uh brothers in in chihuahua and in juarez and and as as well as as uh el paso and in, in uh, new mexico and so it, it it's such a there is nothing you there? more important to me I was not because I was sick. I, I had my surgery and so I wasn't able to to make it. But yeah. I, but Dude, you know what a cool thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I was invited out, but I, I just couldn't afford it this weekend or last weekend to go. Um, but I lectured at in El Paso about six months ago at their first tri-state conference. And that's where Very the cool. Juarez Chihuahua brothers connected with New Mexico and Texas at the El Paso. Right. State, right. That's under awesome. Lodge 1111. So I lectured there on the yellow Cohen, you know, and like we all connect. Very cool. It just didn't work out. I was able to afford this weekend, but what a cool I thing. know that 
She that was kind of how. Good. And those brothers are very esoteric. Those brothers are very uh, deep minded. Yes, yes they Especially are. The Mexican brothers from Chihuahua and Juarez, because mm -hmm. they're doing the Scottish Rite red degrees. Oh, yes. nice. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah, that's that's awesome. That's why we connected so closely and, and we're able to bond so quickly, I think, because, you know, sometimes, you know, especially here in Texas, we get lost in in the York Rite version and mm -hmm. we forget that there there was a, a completely different version that came over and actually yeah. probably first that came into the Americas and. Yeah, and, through the Caribbean. Yes, sir. Yes, through the Caribbean. And, 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 and that's my primary up. focus is, is learning and lecturing and teaching about that, you know, yes. about the the other rights that came in to Freemasonry. You know, we are dominated in the states, not just Texas, in the states in general. We're dominated by the English York right, you know. Right. And the Scottish right is not allowed to confer the one, two, three, except in couple lodges in louisiana one yep. in new york and then there's one starting up in california right nice. now nice no but that's like very nice that's dominated so we have a very limited perspective on freemasonry unfortunately yes. whereas around the world there are bodies countries that allow multiple rights to flourish both mm -hmm. you yes. get a much bigger perspective of what freemasonry was yep. and could be Pick, pick your well, flavor. Yeah, and, and not only that, but when you and have they that, they get along. Exactly. They, they get along, they converse, and they talk mm -hmm. about the, the, the same things, that the, the, the differences as well as the similarities. And, man, how, how can you top that? That's they, they pretty amazing. Each other. Really, like when I was in Brazil with uh, Right Worshipful David Hill, and brother James Medlock in, in April. In Brazil, they have eight legal, regular Masonic blue rights. Wow. Wow. So you can go through one, two, three in eight different lines. And huh. tell you, visiting lodges would never get boring at that point. Right. Yeah. Instead of it being competing, it becomes inspiring. Yeah. Right. Yes. How do yes. you how do you guys do this? How do you guys do that? What's different? What's similar? Mm -hmm. right right and well, really and it, it, it opens the door for survival of the fittest so whatever whatever brings the most value is going to be what thrives at the end of the day instead of right. just having one canned version where you, you, you're trying to force it down it's basically every largest yeah. throat yeah yeah like i love texas masonry love oh yeah doing. but but still yes you are correct um and, and that that stems back to like the 1778 convention of wilhelm's uh when Jean Baptiste Willermose, uh, Adam Weishot, the strict observance, the rectified Scottish Rite, the Illuminati, like the real Illuminati, mm -hmm. when they all met at Wilhelmsbad and basically competed and decided who's going to become the official Freemasonry of Europe at that time. You know? And yes. it, the CBCS and Willermose won. But even with that, they were still allowed to flourish the other rites. You know, even yeah. though even though that became the official, the other rights were still respected. Right, and that's like that. and that's the way it should be. You yeah. know, there's there's an old past grandmaster one time that said, "You you can have all the Freemasonry you can afford," and and man, I'm all about it. If you if you can afford it, you should go out and you should learn the degrees of all these different orders. I my goal in life is to attend as many degrees in my lifetime as I can before I die. That's my goal. That's my bucket list because I want to understand what the ancients were saying in all these different areas, not just from one line, but from, it's, it's kind of like yeah. all the different bloodlines. You know, it's, it's, it's like there's so many different bloodlines. I want to know what the ancients were doing from every line, you know, that all tied into the same philosophical um nuance that we call freemasonry you know this well, it's like brent morris says in uh his lecture the royal secret in the u.s before 1801 brent morris who's his basically the mm -hmm. head of scotch right like he's one of the big right. scotch right reach society he says quote the first three degrees are only a preparation 
for the higher degrees. The first, yeah, yeah. the three first or blue degrees were formed as a test of character or capacity of the initiated, mm-hmm. or they should be admitted to the knowledge of more important mysteries. You know, yeah. and unfortunately, I like that because the states have had such a limitation, we haven't had as much access to the more esoteric rites. Yeah. You know, in Brazil, you have eight rites. In Sweden, you have the Swedish rite. You know, you have much more occult masonry on the mainstream level. Right. Uh, I, I've right. said I said before, particularly with the first two degrees that we practice in Texas, like we just kind of do lip service to the actual lessons. You know, can you memorize a few things? If so, you can advance. But really, if you if you put into practice like the entered apprentice and then the fellow craft, I mean, first of all, that that's that's more than a year's worth of work right there. Well, and so, that's where we can get real. Like, I'm not trying to down talk American or Texas Masonry. There is so much in our degrees, right? But yes, it doesn't tend to get fleshed out enough sometimes. Yeah. Certain people like John Brangle or San Marcos doing their secret teachings, they try to flesh it out. Mm-hmm. You know, right. it's there, but it's just unfortunate we don't have more opportunity. Agreed. Right. As it is, agree, it's, well. it's a let's advance the person and, and they can always look back and, and relearn what they want. But that's not that's, that's not the purpose. That's not the point. Like you don't go to right. you, don't, you don't go to college, you get a degree and say, okay, now look back at everything we taught you and hopefully start applying it now. It's a uh, it's you, you you can't you can't move forward if you're looking back. You have to apply it then and then step to the next stage and go from there. On that note, I've struggled with that same thing you said, right? That we tend to push people through degrees really quick. Mm-hmm. And Scottish Rite, you know, I'm I'm highly involved in the Austin Scottish Rite, but I still commonly refer to reunions as the Masonic Car Wash. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, that's know. exactly what it is. Pay your fee, go through, take a bunch of obligations that you don't know what you're doing, mm-hmm. and you have a new title. Well, right. and that's and and that in and it's even more so like like with the uh, with the shrine, you know, it's basically a. Da, 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 and and you're it right and it, yeah. it take, it's a 30 minute ceremony or whatever but it well your credit your credit does different. the same thing too here here's how i reconcile that like even though we might get pushed through the first three or the 32nd quickly the point is in the follow-up the point is in the education after mm-hmm. and that's why yes. in the scottish rite at austin our collegium ritualis ecosse <laughs> i just had stressed. to say it didn't you you just you just had to say it, didn't you? Yes, sir. They they got the cool name. We yeah. we have the CME, you know, we're the San Antonio CME. Yeah. They got- uh, uh, Kohanky <laughs> was talking about to me about that last week. <laughs> right. But regardless, the point is, even though we got pushed pushed through quick, you follow up with good education. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. like you got initiated. Now you learn. Yes. You know, Pike himself, like paraphrase, said, like you're not really a member of that degree until you've studied the ritual and read morals and dogmas chapter. Mm-hmm. Right. You're not really initiated until you've comprehended and digested those things. So my goal with the C- CRE is to, <laughs> uh, every month we meet for one hour before the state meeting. And I give a lecture on a degree, you know, and we go deep into it, the symbolism, the history, the changes in the ritual, and I try to research as best I can from the old French to the 1801 through Pike's revisions, through Clausen, et cetera, et cetera, to give right. them, you know, the the true thing they should get at that degree. Mm. Yes. You know, and that's where masonry, that's where we need to be as masons. We can't just go through the degrees. We need to learn and study and follow up and read and write and challenge ourselves. Yeah. Like yeah. maybe you have to learn a new language. You know, I'm constantly telling my students to learn Hebrew, at least the letters. Right. If you don't understand the Hebrew letters, you cannot understand the Scottish Rite degrees. Interesting. Right. You right. know, and it's only 22 yep. letters. Learn one a day. In three weeks, you'll know. Them. Hmm. In, uh, in our CME, we, we do the, um, you know, of course, we, we go back to, and we're doing each one degree each month as well. And so, we go back to 
explaining the degree as to how you would see it if you were sitting there watching it. Um, and then we go into a, a comparison of the, of the Southern jurisdiction and the Northern jurisdiction and, and the parallels. Huge and then, job. then we go, yes. And then we go into the uh, morals and dogma lesson. And then we go into the alchemist lesson and, and where it really, really digs deep and where you should know those Hebrew letters to, to be able to, to know where it fits in the Kabbalah and, and the tree of life and, and, uh, and, and why the, you're doing what you're doing. That's a beautiful thing that Brad and Robert have created down there. You know, Bradley Kilhanke and Robert Park have created a really amazing Scottish Rite CME in San Antonio. Yes. And I wish they could be down there more often. You know, I come down there to, to talk here and there, but they've done something really cool, man. And one of my goals with the Austin Scottish Rite, I'm currently the guy teaching everything. One of my right. goals is like what they have. Park will teach one part. Yes. Brad will teach one part, you know? Yeah, it's and then... Good. Yeah, and Everyone. then I teach one part, and then uh, and then Joe teaches one part, and then uh, well, actually, Brad has stepped out now that he's PR, and um, so it's, it's he's PR, but he, yeah, but he still jumps in. He can't help himself, <laughs> but yeah, which like which us. we're all we're all better, but you know, I'll start it off, and then Joe will jump in, and then uh, Chris Williams will jump in, and then Park will finish it up. And cool. that way, by the time part gets finished, everybody's just blown. What just happened? What just yeah. happened? Yeah, blown. yeah. Well, and then, one of my most humbling moments was at the CME this month, right? When Brad introduced me, and he goes, right? "Y'all know Robert Park, right? <laughs> like yes. y'all get your minds blown by him, right?" And he goes, "Paul's the guy that Park calls when he has questions." <laughs> <laughs> right, right, like right. that was just like so heartfelt and it's like oh yeah, you know right yeah. and that and and there's there's reason for that you put in a lot of work you've done you've done your due diligence you know you've assisted in 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 rewriting so many uh books you know translating them so that we can now see what yes where where we could only rely on somebody's you know, personal, right. Second you know, interpretation. Or, yeah. Secondhand information. Yeah. 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 Secondhand or even tertiary. And and that's yeah. my goal with my books is to give primary source documents. Right. You know, like right. last week I released the uh, 1767 general statutes of the Freemasonry of the Knights of Lacombe. And that is a primary source that is the 1767 bylaws and how the order is ran. Wow. Give people the primary source document, not your opinion. Mm -hmm. And I, I give introductions and I give commentaries, but you're reading the primary source document. Right. Well, wow. right. And that's so important. And I'm also really big on referencing uh, sources and manuscripts. I get really upset when people publish a book like, oh, here's this new thing. I'm like, well, what is the source? What's the manuscript? What is, you know what I mean? Like, be clear of what we're presenting. Yeah. Right. We're all right. supposed to be intellectuals here. Let's let's actually talk about our sources. Yeah. When I when I got deep into Golden Dawn and deep into Martinism, I was very frustrated that the majority of the curriculum and books did not reference where it came from. You know, mm. but because it had been out there for so long, it becomes canon. Yes. Yeah. It's just yeah. accepted. It's right. widely accepted because it's just it that's how it's, it's always it's like been done. Right? Stories, you know, like the stories of the Templars were linked to masonry or this or that. Right. Let's right. actually reference where that legend came from. Mm -hmm. So we can have historical context. Right. Yeah, it's not bad that we that we utilize those stories to to uh, further the Mason. There's nothing wrong with that, but they, it, it is good. Yes, exactly. But it is good that we know where it comes from, and and right. that way we we when somebody when somebody talks to us about was was King Arthur a, a Templar? Right. <laughs> well, King Arthur was a fictitious character, so um, I don't think that that's possible. But, but he's, he's an inspired individual. We can still apply the teachings to. Yes, like, it's important yes. that we all know that in 1734, Andrew. 
Chevalier Andrew Michael Ramsey created the first lecture about Crusader Knights being Masons. You know, it's important we know where this yes. is. Interesting. Instead, yes. of just, instead of just accepting it as canon. Right. And unfortunately, right. a lot of times uh, our brethren are getting their information from things like Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Or from, <laughs> from, you know, less than scholarly resources. Yeah. Right. Right. And again, that's well, my and- goal with my books is to give the original manuscript. And that's why when I publish it, you get the facsimile, like the actual manuscript. You get the French transcription. You get the English with my commentary. So that oh, very you cool. See exactly where I'm pulling it from. I yes. like it. Yes. Well, and that's um, you know, it goes back to the the first three degrees, kind of deciding if that person is going to be able to retain right. the rest, or if it, you know, if they're really prepared at heart to do that, and um, because like we're so it's a test of character. Exactly. So because we're in such a a closed minded um, way of thinking in, in our region, I'm not going to you know say society. Yes. Yeah, in society. Yeah, and society. Um, that's a safer, right. that's so a safer let, way of putting it. So let's let's say that. Yeah. So since we're such closed minded, you know, people in society, um, the we don't dig for the real truth we accept what somebody else tells us and 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 take that as fact instead of right. um digging and and making sure for ourselves that that we're that we're on the right path right yeah. right that's why i think it's so important that that people like you are out there and and our brothers need to know that you're out there and available to to talk and and visit and, and lecture Thank you. And I am available. Yes. And and thank you. And that's why you want me on tonight. Right. You know, I am available and this is, this is my life calling. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, one of the things you said we want to talk about tonight is like, what got me into masonry, right? Yeah. Right. I've, there was no other option. Right. Since I was a kid hanging out in the woods, spending my summers in the woods and camping, I just had this connection to nature and at the time all I could didn't know how to interpret it. Right. But I, I felt like I, I wanted to talk to the squirrels, talk to the trees. Like it sounds kind of hippie. Right. But for real. Right. This connection with nature. Right. And as I got older, I started reading more and got into mythology, Christianity, Judaism, witchcraft, you know, and I was very blessed to be in the gifted program, uh, it, public school, but I had a very, very good gifted program teacher. Mm. I had her for third to sixth grade, the same teacher for four years. Wow. Wow. Isn't that cool? Like you that get is, that is. relationship, right? Yeah. And because we were gifted, we didn't have to do state curriculum. You know, we just had to pass the state test, like no big deal. So we spent all of third grade studying Greek mythology. And not just studying, but doing plays. So like creating yeah. costumes and like, I have a video on VHS of me doing the equinox in third grade. <laughs> wow, very cool. Dressed up as fucking Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? And all the gods come before Zeus. Like rain says, I'm the most important God because I water the crops and help them grow. Sun, I'm the most important God because I give the warmth and the light. All the gods come before Zeus and he creates, he recognizes them Mm -hmm. and he creates the equinox. He creates the seasons, right? Everyone has its own time. I I I would argue that's the kind of stuff they should be teaching everybody in school anyway. The the classical stuff, the classical education. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which we don't do anymore. Right. Right? Well, and, and I think that, I think that that's kind of the urge that, many masons especially now but even in the past, younger younger men think, are joining for that mm-hmm. that's exactly right but i think that if we if we go back and look at the guys that that fell to the side that just didn't fit in and they stopped coming to lodge they i bet to- you i bet you a million bucks 
That's why. They wanted they were looking. Yeah, they were looking for those. Angels. And they're disappointed. They could have found business meetings anywhere. Yes. That's not where they yes. came from. Yes. yes. And we I have agree. to have the business meetings. We got to do, do minutes. Well, to... yeah, it's, but it's we part can, of it. We can supplement our meetings. You know, yes. like even simply like San Marcos Lodge, Parsons too. Uh, I'm junior warden at Parsons. We at least have a Masonic moment where like the junior warden gives some kind of quick lesson. Right, right. And we have a, a a biblical moment. We have a bylaws moment. At, at least something, right? And same Scottish Rite. Uh, every Scottish Rite state meeting, I lecture for an hour before the meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you right. want deep esotericism, there it is. Like we yeah. have to provide more than just green beans and minutes. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and the and the we're, numbers the numbers show that. Yeah. It's in the we're data. even. Doing yeah, we're even doing that in our uh, Scottish Rite meeting. We have a portion to where we're taking a degree from the northern jurisdiction and deciphering it and, and comparing the two. We, we take turns with the education committee. We all will take a month and, and do it. And uh, yeah, we're presenting that in the meeting. That's part of the meeting now. Dude, I got to you know, start. I got to start going to San Antonio's meetings. Like I have not, I have not studied the NMJ. He, he's just Northern. building it up, trying to get you to come. That's all he's doing. He's I know, just trying to. <laughs> I, I'm not studying Northern because I, I know it's a modern offshoot. I prefer to study the the old sources. Oh but, yeah, uh, very fascinating, man. Uh, Justin, yeah, it's, where where do you live? I live. Um, the the town is called Grandview. It's about 45 minutes south of Fort Worth. Okay, you're, you're North Texas. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we, we got North Texas, we got San Marcos, we got San Antonio. Right. Right. Word. Well, and, and, and I've been <laughs> wanting to I've been wanting to visit San Marcos Lodge for a long time because I've heard great oh, things yeah. about it. Dude. I think it's only like two hours, two hours or San so. San Marcos Lodge is so cool, man. Uh first Tuesdays, state meeting. Mm -hmm. That building, I think, was a condemned frat house at one point. <laughs> before we and then nice. Basically, one man. Um, oh my gosh, can't believe I'm blanking. John. Yes. John Tolbert. John Tolbert. Oh, okay. Single-handedly remodeled and created the beauty of that lodge. When you walk in, you're in. You walk into a beautiful dining hall with like gold curtains and candles, and the yeah. lodge itself is purple curtains. Um, we have tableaus from guthrie we have lights we have incense we have custom painted tracing boards for the degrees nice brother nice. al painted one two and three tracing boards that we use wow Very yeah cool. yeah yeah i Absolutely. didn't get over there you know it's, it's it's a and we have a library it's a beautiful building uh most worshipful grandmaster brad billings was down last month for the 150 150th anniversary and he commented on the the ashlers mm -hmm. and gave us a very beautiful lesson on that it's, cool. it's a really cool lodge i'd love to host you yes very please, cool. please. we'd love to come yeah yeah i've, I've always oh. heard great things about it so yeah that's that's we'll be we'll be talking soon about that so we've jumped way ahead of what yeah we're, we're just do, chatting right now but I, know. I, but I would i would like to know um you know what what brought you into Freemasonry? You said it was a life journey. Um, when you joined, mm -hmm. what it, did it meet your expectations? So, like I said, like I've been studying religion and philosophy my whole life. Uh, I was really big into American transcendentalism. Hmm. Thoreau, Whitman, Emerson in high school. Uh, studying mythology. Like I said, elementary school, I was in a gifted program. Third yeah. grade, we studied Greek. Fourth grade, we studied Roman. And then fifth and sixth, we did Narnia. So no, by the time nice. I was nice. yeah. so by the time I was 13, I had studied and done plays on Greek, Roman, and Christian mysticism. <laughs> Just kept going. And and what do you do when you're 13, raised Catholic and, and rebelling? I got into it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. So I got into Wicca when I was 13 and it, it, it broadened my horizons, right? 
but you, you, I outgrew it. And then I found Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. Randomly, I found Christian Gnosticism, the idea of a heretical Christianity that was more personal, that was more Buddhist, that was more about the individual's experience and really latched into it. But with all that, being raised Catholic, I had this (laughs) devotion and respect for ritual. You know, the Catholic Mass is one of the penultimate rituals of humanity. Right. It's been going on for 2000 years. Mm -hmm. So I had this dichotomy. Like, I really love the Catholic ritual, but I don't buy into the dogma, right? Right. Gnosticism's more rosette. And then I had a girlfriend who, her uncle was a Mason. And she's like, you need to check out the Masons. <laughs> so at 18, I, I checked out the Phoenix Masonic Lodge, Phoenix, Arizona. Mm-hmm. But you had to be 21 to join. And then I moved to Texas at 21. And on my 21st birthday, I went down to Lodge 12, the Scottish Rite, knocked on the door. And that's pretty much it, man. I knocked on the door to, to join and to learn, to find the next step. Like I had read everything. And I was like, the next step is like, I need a group. Yeah. It, right. It sounds like you came, you came more informed than most Masons when you knocked on that door, though. Perhaps. Yeah. I was 21. I was young but I was very well read Mm. and looking back now at 36, I can see how naive I was like how much I needed the fraternity. Right. Right. I had a lot of knowledge, right? So everyone respected me right off the bat, but masonry, when I first went through those first three degrees, I was kind of, it was mind blowing. You know, I had never been through initiation that EA initiation without saying too much. Right. That EA initiation really tested me and blew my mind, you know? Mm -hmm. Like all the conspiracy theory ideas came up. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) I know what you mean. What's going to happen? You know, what's going to happen, right? And when I got to the end of it, I was kind of disappointed. You know, not in the system, but in the sense that the the system didn't give you more to study didn't give you a way to apply it right right yeah right but through lodge 12 i met some people who connected me to the golden dawn so i jumped in the golden dawn jumped in martinism jumped on and i spent years studying that and when i came back to masonry i saw it in a new light i see yes interesting I saw in the light was like, oh, I didn't, I was, I didn't see that before. Right, Mm -hmm. right. And that's, and, and that's the, the sad thing is that, well, it's, we rely on, on having good mentors in our lodge to, to carry us through and to teach us those things. And today the mentors are, are basically your, the guys that are teaching you catechism, you're, there aren't many mentors that can take you beyond that. And so yeah. right. we as, as free thinkers need to, you know, stick together and, and really learn the most that we can and be that mentor to the brothers coming into the Blue right. Lodge because, because yeah. they're looking for that. Yeah. They're looking yeah. for it. So we need to be there so that we can give that to them. So, and if okay. we don't, then, then it's, it's give on it us. It's so our fault. Yeah. My, my question, Paul, for you is seeing that you have this background where you, you've explored hermeticism and alchemy and Gnosticism and all these things. So you you have this this framework to rely back on. Do you see uh, references to this in Freemasonry? Do you see uh, tie ins anywhere? When Because there are some people when you talk about these things, they, they think as though there's no relevance at all to Freemasonry. But they don't have the they don't have the background. So that's, from your perspective, that's only because they're un, ed, uneducated. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's what I was trying to say is like when I first went through the degrees, I didn't really appreciate them. Now, you know, 15 years later, I see so much more in those first three than I did then. Right. Whether it's a maturity thing, 
or whatever. Like I see much more in it now. And, and this is how I've kind of reconciled it. For young Masons coming in, the Blue Lodge is the entrance. It's a test of character, right? Yeah. Appendant bodies are what is meant to teach the deeper stuff. That's what the right. Scottish Rite was for. Right. You know, Pike was trying to recreate the Scottish Rite to actually teach true mystical esoteric knowledge. Mm. Unfortunately, it's kind of gotten watered down too, but it's all yes. there. And San Antonio, Austin are doing our best to extract that. Yes. Yes. In fact, I'm 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 joining. Well, I'm not joining. I'm transferring my membership. I I originally became York Wright when I first got out of the blue degrees, looking for more, and and they were beautiful degrees. Um, fortunately, we had people that could really put them on, and so I'm transferring my you membership. Worked with, uh, Al Max. What? No, I I didn't. I actually was up in North Texas when I did mine, and so. David Rogers was in there and then a bunch of other brothers were in there doing and, the degrees. And to be clear, I've not done the York right. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. I Good mean, show. we're all York right. Cause we're master masons, yeah. but right. I've not, I've not gone through York right still. Well, I have, I have, and now I'm, I'm reaffiliating in San Antonio for the same reason that we love the Scottish right as much as we do. I would like to start building that up in the York, right? Because there's so much more for right. people to learn yeah. that, that we're not, that just isn't being taught. Well, and on that note, have you, have you checked out Piers Vaughn's book? Um, do you know that name Piers Vaughn? I don't. Uh huh. But He's a New York Mason, I, uh, Martinus as well. He, he wrote the, I can't, I think it's called like the capitular study course. You can Google it, but he wrote the New York York Wright College's capitular course on those degrees. So right. I imagine that's what you'd want to tap into. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I uh, I'll definitely get that out and and check it out. Yeah, but I'm I, I'm just now transferring the membership, so I'm going to, going to as this year winds down and I'm no longer DDGM and I have a little more time, then right. I'll be able to devote my time to that yeah. and try to... This year has been busy. Yes. It's In a good so... way. Yes, it has been. Like, has like been. right where David Hill, he's one of my best friends. I love David. He's great. Yeah, guy. me too. One of my best friends, man. But we've it's been a very fun Masonic year, but it's also been extremely busy. Yeah. Yes. He's yes, like, I cannot wait for January 19th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right right we're i'm the, i'm right there with him yeah you know what's yeah. funny what's funny is that he and i are kind of connected um a friend that a dear friend of mine when i was in high school that that i went went to high school with he went to college with and uh we we right. connected we were connected cool. through through that common person and and uh she's beautiful and and uh and we all think the same Yes. Dude, I, I met david hill at a uh, a punk bar <laughs> <laughs> so nice. see that. We, we we love talking about our origin story dude i was on the phone talking about a uh doing a kabbalah class and uh, d doing an alchemy series at austin 12 and dave's like who is this loud mouth talking about doing alchemy at the lodge he's like i thought i knew all the cool <laughs> esoteric masons <laughs> right like that's literally how he meant, you know. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. So what what I really what I really like about this conversation, and I, like I said, I, I have been looking forward to this for quite a while, is that usually we're very nuts and bolts, and, and been kind of trying to get away from that. Like we want to explore other other things, and so I, once a once I knew Dennis had had spoke to you about coming on the show, I was very excited because I know that you're you're deep deep in the esoteric well. Um, if, if a Mason was interested in, in, in learning more, kind of taking that step, uh, and, 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 and understanding that it's, it's a, it's a rabbit hole once you get started. But if yeah. someone was to ask you, where should I start? What would you recommend? So I try to be very conservative with that answer, you know, um, other people might say, join my order right mm. 
what I do instead is I try to guide them down the Masonic path. Uh, Scottish Rite. Yeah. And not just Scottish Rite, but read the books. Yes. And, and then, I recommend for a lot of people to not only read it, but read it along with listening to it from, you know, because it's available once you <laughs> through the, through the, yep. uh, through the Southern jurisdiction the website. Book. Yeah. They've got the audio book there for every Scottish right member. So I recommend doing both at the same time because it's well, a tough read. Well, and that's, how I, studied, uh, that's, how, that's how I studied J.R.R. Tolkien, you know, like I'm a huge Tolkien Lord of the Rings geek. Yeah. So I'm literally right. reading it and then listening to a podcast about it. Oh, episode. I didn't know those podcasts about it. Oh, dude. Prancing Pony uh, Podcast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, immerse yourself. Immerse yourself in Scottish Rite. Immerse yourself in the classical Masonic writers. Wilmhurst, Pike. Fuck it. You know, read the 1700s, 1800s texts. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. Read, read the Frank... Franken manuscripts and and read the the book of words by Albert Pike and yeah yeah start with I mean, those there, but then create find whatever your natural inclination is for a spiritual path so like when I talk to a Mason who's interested in doing deeper spirituality my first question is what is your religious upbringing or do you have a religious inclination mm -hmm. you know and depending on their answer I'll point them to different sources. You know, I'm not going to send a Southern Baptist to read Crowley. Right. You know? right. I'm not going to send a uh, young dude with blue hair to read uh, the King James Bible. Right. Yeah. You, know, you, you right. find what's going to, their natural inclination guide them down that. And that's why I work with the Golden Dawn, Martinism, Elo Cohen, Gnostic Church. There's different avenues for different people. But right. Masons, young Masons should know if they want more, there's a lot out there and there's a lot of good resources. Um, my one advice though, is research whoever or whatever you get involved with, you know, make sure they're giving you primary sources, make sure you're not just taking it at face value. Right. I'll say right. that when, when I was a, a very new Mason, and in the midst of my frustrations, like there was, there was a time when I left the fraternity. Uh, it, it really kind of felt like I, I was, I was, <laughs> right. oh, you did too? oh, okay. Well, I mean, it felt like there was a time when I was on an island just by myself. Like, like I thought I was looking, I was looking for the, the right thing down the wrong path. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and now it seems as though for a young Mason, there's so many options that are, that are made known. Like if all you have to do is it's changing. It's changing. It's changing. Yes, exactly. Like it's, it's a lot more. And oh. I'm not saying the options weren't there 15 years ago. I'm just saying that they're they a lot weren't obvious. Though. They weren't obvious. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very refreshing. Esoteric. Again, I because love it. The young men want that. Yes, you know? yes. And we're becoming more open again. Like people talk about the secrets of masonry. The only things we can't say according to Grand Lodge laws is modes of recognition and this esoteric work. Mm -hmm. You know, we can right. talk about everything else. Right. You know, and people don't realize how much we can talk about. For example, just open any of Arturo de Hoyos' books. Yes. Like they're printing all of them. Yes. You yes. know, you can, and those are public. A, a non Mason can join the Scottish Rite Research Society. A non-Mason really? can get those books. Hmm. You know, uh, wow. Dr. Martha Keith Shushard, a female, is one of the biggest contributors to Herodim and to Quarter Coronati. She's a woman. You know, things are much more open than we think. And nowadays, it's different from 10 years ago. It's more open. There's better research going on. So there are more opportunities for Masons. Unfortunately, though, I got to say this. Unfortunately, it's still difficult to find a true spiritual group if you want to go and join something beyond Mason. Right, the, the the circles. Yeah, yeah. We've, you know, we've talked about that before on the show. That they're, you know, everybody says, "Well, you're not high enough. You just don't know." Right. And right. and you know, they're 
there's a there's a awesome. there's this circle way up high that you know everybody that these certain people are a part of and this and that but really the circles are all around us they're you know it's just finding the group of people that are your people right and that's your circle you know those right. the you find your people and that's your circle and you end up f finding through those circles you'll you'll move into a different circle because yeah what you're, yeah yeah well, and that's what, what i was saying like through through lodge 12 i found my golden dawn initiator and through right. him i found the gnostic church and martinism you know um and like i said uh brother justin you mentioned that you left you left for a while mm -hmm. you know i i didn't demit but i definitely left yeah. you know so right. for a right. long time yeah i didn't admit but I, I just lost all interest in yep right right for about a decade i just did uh occult work oh wow and then the guy that got me back around 2018 probably uh craig hammonds i showed up randomly to a scottish rite meeting when he was doing the collegium and i walked in he was talking about kabbalah i'm like we can do this now <laughs> sweet right, like, this is right. What we should be doing I've been waiting for this. Yeah, and, okay. and that's why I love my position with the Austin Scottish Rite is being director of work and being mass, venerable master of the collegium. I can basically teach whatever I want, but I keep it within bounds. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah, do yeah. one degree a month and I go into the degree deep. The history of the degree, the sources, where it came from, the modern version, and then the symbolism. You know, and like we just we're doing a three month session on the 27th degree. Oh, uh, wow. Because it's it really it like really deserves pages of moral dogma. <laughs> yeah, it really deserves. It's a, it's a big one. Yeah. So we're spending three months talking about the alchemy and the Kabbalah and the occultism, the symbols, you know, like this is what I signed up for. I love it. Yes. Yes. And a lot of people have. So if you're listening and, and you're not getting the Freemason that you're looking for, you know, take heed it's out there it's out yeah. there you just gotta check out my youtube <laughs> right for real right? my youtube i got like 60 hours of videos on there all about this stuff what is your youtube yeah um, you need to give it to way to find me yeah we'll, we'll link uh okay. link tree slash ninja paul ninja paul that's the easiest I'll pull that up right now and that pulls up all my links pulls up my bookstore uh with all my books pulls up all my social media uh martinism stuff and then the youtube the youtube is really a a gold mine there's a lot in there man very cool very cool that's what brothers need to know you know we we're finding so many people listening to us because of this very reason because they're 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 wondering why they're not finding this in the lodge and you know of course we've gone through a <laughs> early the early american culture has always been christian um, Even. and and yeah and and that's okay but i'm a christian kind of, right me too and yeah. and it but it's kind of closed us off to only think in one way instead of you know instead of realizing that was a book written by men um of course they they had god's spirit in them so yes it it's it's good stuff but it but it's still just one book of many you know there's there's so much out there that was written so so far before you know and that's uh, part of the beauty of freemasonry yeah the volume of sacred law does not have to be a holy bible it can right. be other sacred texts we can all meet around the bible because we're westerners you know mm -hmm. whether right. you're Jew or christian or islamic we all agree on the torah right you know? five books we all agree on that and that's the beauty is Freemasonry can connect different cultures and expose us to different cultures. Right. Right. You know, and that's the, we realize that's that the beauty. We think we know about our religion is only a sliver. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, and, and that's, I, that's I, the beauty of, go ahead. I think I've said this before on the podcast. I, I think uh, everything has an esoteric and esoteric side, right? So uh, the eso, the exoteric is is you just take it for face value what you read yep. and the the esoteric uh it, it goes much deeper and so i mean you could you could be just fine you could live a fine life just going by the exo the exoteric 
aspects of, of your of your oh yeah body of a sacred law some like of us you, can't do that yeah yeah some of us can't but if some you, of us need more we need more right but for, right. for 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 the everyday joe like if you read that and follow the rules that it, that it lays out for you you'll live a good life you'll you'll have a great life but there, yes. there's definitely more to it also and it so, doesn't make you a bad person for 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 wanting more or looking deeper into it it's right. just it's just it's just the way well, we're made. Nature's we're made different. And it doesn't we're make different. Some reason. people are you don't yeah. want to go deeper, right? Sometimes some people are. Yeah, yeah. Some people are more literal, and some people are 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 more spiritual. And so well, that, that's part of the beauty of masonry, man. It, you don't. Not everyone has to be an esotericist. Nope. Not right. everyone has to be an occultist. Masonry can be a lot of things to a lot of people. Yeah. For yeah. some, it's yeah. just a fraternity. For right. some, it's a charitable philanthropic organization, mm -hmm. and it does those well. For others, it's a occult rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? And right. all those things are of value. There, there's you're, a phrase, Brother Justin, what you're saying about the, the depth, exoteric and esoteric. Mm -hmm. There's a teaching from Kabbalah um, about scripture that when you read scripture on the first level, Scripture is like a beautiful woman in a dress. The first level, the exoteric, is just looking at the beautiful woman in a dress. The next level is you've seen her ankle. You start to <laughs> literally, they literally, you're literally pulling up the dress. And as you go in the deeper levels of the scripture, you're seeing her thighs, this, that, that. You're seeing the, the reality, the truth behind it. And everything right. it goes from literal to allegory, to archetypal, you know, and not everyone can go all those, all the ways and that's okay. But the whole point is like Kabbalah is all, is, is all about sexuality. You know, it's all about how God and the universe interacts. Let's see you know, right. how man and woman interact. Um, the prince and the princess. So they use a lot of sexual imagery. And the whole point of Kabbalah is that once you get to the top, you finally see the thing you really want to see. And they call that the secret, the rose. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Yes. I like but it. some people are happy just. On those some, some people just happy to see a pretty lady and that's fine. There you go. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I think today, today's world the reason why we're seeing so many brothers that are so interested and so open to any type of, of mysticism and from the ancients is because they're not growing up in the typical Christian household. They're not, they're not growing up in. in yeah. So they're coming in, they're looking for that and they're yeah. looking for that, that personal connection with those mentors that will, you know, teach them because, because they don't have that. And they're, there we're we're at at the first time in history, and I've said this a million times. I know you're just in forward of it, but we've we've uh, we've got people that are at the age to join that have been brought up with a with a smartphone in their hand. Yep. So so they've grown up with this technology, instant education and instant information, and now they're they're saying, well, now they're starting to question. Because there's so much misinformation. Exactly. Now they're coming in with, with the questions. Over information and misinformation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So now they're coming in so and to learn from the us. Tradition. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And give them something authentic. Yeah. You know, like there's no reason for someone in 2022 to not be educated. You know? Right. We have right. in our hand more knowledge than Alexander the Great, Da Vinci, anyone ever had accessible. The problem right. is misinformation too, right? Yeah. Yes. This is why I'm really big again, like with my books, I'm really big about primary sources. Yeah. You know, don't read Leo Taxel's secondary tertiary source about Freemasonry. You know, Leo Taxel that had the whole right. read the primary sources, right? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's 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 like an example that I read earlier today is like we have we have Unless you Excuse were in the library of Alexandria, never has there been a greater time to have all the information of of, of humanity at your fingertips. Yet people think the world is flat, right? right. And <laughs> and uh, 
and you as 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 humans i think we we crave some kind of some kind of spirituality in our lives absolutely something some it's kind of some kind of connection life. to something greater absolutely but like it's been pointed out we're not having that exposure that we were in the past to to the 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 common face that that exists and so absolutely. people get to a certain age and, and and they're sticking these things out they want them but they don't want something they don't necessarily want something traditional because maybe they don't even know where to where to start they want personal they want something personal today, we're such a personal age what it, i think what we're getting to is we're in, we're living in a society very similar to 1750 when the yellow cohen started when martin is when we're living in, in a society very similar to the rise of the enlightenment era right the oh, Enlightenment so. era did a lot of great things right but yeah. it also favored reason so high so much that it disavowed spirituality mm -hmm. you know it birthed materialism we're living in a materialist postmodern society and people are craving a return to spirituality yes that's why pasquale's elo cohen was so successful because in france the enlightenment era was spreading so big there was so much secularism that people wanted ritual they wanted a deep connection with deity but on their own terms not yeah, what the right. church says yes. but my study the classics but i want to have my personal experience and that's what these orders are supposed to do is to guide you to a personal experience of deity yes and that yeah. personal experience is what's going to write your life yeah. you know what i mean like in my orders we're going to give you curriculum you're going to do structure because we figured out a way to make it work step by step. But once you're done, you're going to have your own experience and it's going to be unique. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. Yeah. I was, so I was raised you're not listening to the preacher. You're not following law. You're not copycatting. You're not regurgitating. You're creating. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I went to Southern Baptist churches all my life growing up. And uh, I got to a point where uh, uh, I, I had moved away uh, from from where I had grown up. And I was just exploring, like just getting involved in the community, exploring the churches. And it was a Methodist church. And so uh, much more much more structured, much more ritualistic than well, Baptist Methodist church. Well, basically Catholic light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the impression I got. I was like, I was, I was very impressed. I was like, man, I really yeah, like. They're Catholics without as much dogs. Yeah. yeah. And they do have apostolic succession. They have what? They have apostolic succession. What's that? Uh, so apostolic succession is what the Church of Rome and Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, the idea is that Jesus laid hands on his apostles. Mm -hmm. And those 12 apostles laid hands. They laid hands. There's a direct lineage. Oh, oh okay. From master student all the way down. Wow. So like in the West, it's basically Catholics, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Methodists, and Lutherans. Imagine that. Actually, Lutherans have after episode succession. Yes. Wow. Outside of that. of that, outside of that, preachers in general don't have that. And that's something they're missing because that's the chain of initiation. That's the past masters. That's the mm, interesting. So sorry, I interrupted, but no, going. no, that, that's interesting. No, I was just going to say that I, uh, I had never experienced religion with, with combined with, because frankly, there's no ritual in Baptist church. I mean, you get baptized and that's not really very ritualistic. I had never experienced ritual or structure like that in my, in my religious practices. And it was very interesting to, to actually, like, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And, um, I, I guess where I'm going with that is, uh, is there's no for people that have no structure at all that have had no like we we're saying like they never really went to a church or, or had any kind of uh formal Basically, formal you know, background it, it can and, and in granted, a denominational way yes yeah like for anyone watching because you know how the people are they like to jump on it freemasonry is not a church it's not a faith it's not a religion right but it we're is talking spiritual. very spiritual stuff but freemasonry yeah. is not yeah right it yeah. can be anything to anyone exactly and so it can offer that it could be that it could be that path where where it's 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 not a religion 
but it, it's it's structure spirituality and we all need structure we need daily ritual yes. you know yes you gotta get up and brush your teeth you know take a shower you know you have to have daily rituals man and yeah. that's one thing that's really missing in the youth today and modern yes. life yes i was gonna yeah. say uh as an educator um you're a teacher i am a teacher and what, what do you do uh, I teach uh, right now. I teach integrated physics and chemistry at a middle school. So uh, science, cool. science is my is my bread and butter. Like I love That's science. Really cool man. I love it. I love it, man. It's, you think uh, that? Can I ask you a question? Sure. The Big Bang. Mm -hmm. Are you are you familiar with the Kabbalistic creation myth? No. Okay. May I real quick? Yes. Yeah, I love to hear it. Short version. Uh, Kabbalah basically posits genesis that there was the void mm -hmm. and then god inhaled and then exhaled out the universe and everything came from one source everything exploded from one breath right mm -hmm. that sounds to me so similar to the big bang yeah and that's the 10 second version but what I've seen is that science has gotten closer to religion again. Yes. There was a time mm -hmm. science and religion were united yes. and then they got divided. They should not be at odds. You know, they right. should complement each other. Well, particularly, particularly when you look at physics and, and astrophysics and things like that. Yeah. I, I've said exactly what you, what you pointed out, like during the enlightenment period, um, Isaac Newton and all those guys, uh, who, religion. Who was an alchemist. I'm, oh, who? Newton. Newton. Yeah. Yeah, he was but, an alchemist. But science, a lot of his a lot of his inventions were actually like accidents. He was more yeah. of an alchemist, you know. I love that. But science science was viewed as a way to explain God, not as a way to uh, refute God. And we got right. to a point where they they kind of, for whatever reason, we kind of viewed them as as opposite of one another. But now, when you look at particularly at physics, and the smaller and smaller you get, the the more physics. The more the more they try to explain quantum physics, the more it sounds as though you're reading. The more it sounds as though you're reading a chapter of Kabbalion, right? Exactly. Right. It, it, it's 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 almost exactly like Hermeticism. Yep. And so yeah, and, and like you're saying, um, there there's no evidence. Like we have no idea what happened before the Big Bang, or even if it really was as condensed as as we say it was. We just know everything's expanding from a source. And so, they're starting to admit that, which is nice. Yes. Well, they're even right. we don't actually know what we're talking about. Even this, uh, What's this fork, you know, this, yeah, yeah. But now they're even saying the universe may be like a, like artificial or like a, like holographic or yeah. a figment of imagination. Well, Hermeticism teaches that it, it, the exactly. universe is mental, and so yeah, I mean, it, it's it's Kabbalah all coming back all of those things. They can all be true, right? Yeah. Yes. Like this can be material. It can be mental. It can be a hologram all at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and yeah. that's a big thing is learning to hold two ideas in your mind at the same time. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be either or. True. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Like that's a big problem with modern politics, right? Everyone wants to be only one or the other. How yeah, you've got to be on the far right or the far left. Bad in both. Yeah. 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 It's uh it's almost heretical to admit there's merit on on both sides. Right. But but yeah, I agree. You can, you can, you can, you can hold, and I think it's a sign of an educated mind is the ability to, to hold more than one idea and understanding that the information that will, that will further refine that will present itself at some point. Well, and if right. it doesn't, that's okay too. Killers. If you have two positive, negative, black, white, a third is going to develop. Right. And the third is what you're looking for. These are not the truth. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the truth, you know. I like it. I like hey, it a lot. Um, absolutely, this is really cool. I'm digging this. Can I can I take a quick break though? Yeah, some absolutely. Water. I'll pause it real quick and uh, I'll grab some water too. You guys good? I'm yeah, good, man. Fun. I'm loving this it. Awesome. Unstructured, which is <laughs> let's roll so it. We're randomly talking about martial arts now in Mason. Um, <laughs> George Moxley. Uh, DI for my district helped me with my C-cert this year, mm -hmm. you know, and he and I have become friends. We have all the same karate friends. 
that dude's been doing karate in Texas for like 40 years. Um, Dan Baker, one of my instructors down here, Vietnam vet shot down in a helicopter beyond enemy lines, wow. you know, got out of the jungle. He taught karate at Texas State for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And at 70, he ran the Boston Marathon backwards. What? <laughs> just to prove, awesome. just to prove to his students you could do it. Wow. Like that is cool, man. So like, this would... is how you meet Maestri, man. Like I've known that dude for 15 years. It's only the last two that we actually started right learning about each other, man. You know, and and that's really what I'm getting out of Maestri now. Since I've come back, it's one thing David Hill said to me. It's like I'm in Maestri for the intergenerational friendships mm -hmm. like where else can you get intergenerational friendships like yes good friends who are 80 60 40 20 yeah you know that, that's that's something I, I i've talked about before is um when i first especially when i first joined uh that put me in contact not only with my own grandfather but other other older men men of that generation in my community that great guys like they they i'm a district, district instructor and they knew more they knew the work better than i did right sure. just did to be doing it for so long and, and uh, the work the wisdom exactly exactly right but uh, but but sitting and playing dominoes with those old guys i mean um those were the hardest that's where the real cool stuff happens right not necessarily oh, yeah the lodge it's the hanging out yes yes Spending time with the old, with the with the older generation and learning from them before they're gone, uh, yeah. that was. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know what it was at the time. Yeah, when uh, I was twenty one, I didn't get that. Yeah, right. You know, but right. now thirty six, that's what I really value. Yeah, yeah, and and that's something that that we should teach a little more often to our younger guys is is that. You know, they are the mentor generation and they kept the fraternity going for all this time so that we would be able to have a piece. So yeah. they deserve that respect in, in itself. They deserve that respect. Now, of course. And now it's we, our turn. Yeah. We have to learn from them and take up the mantle. Right. Yeah. And, and unless we respect what they did and respect who they are, they're not going to want to pass that down to us. So, you know, we've, we've uh made jokes about you know shut up past master and, and this and that but the reality is it's and and it goes back to a different a different uh thought but the well, reality is, said that about the youth you know <laughs> right yeah. but th the reality is we, we need to as as younger masons we need to um lean yeah. on the 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 wealth of information that our that our mentor generation has and so that we can be the mentors to the next generation coming up yes and if we if we're not willing to to do that then we're shooting ourselves and our fraternity in the foot right no. we, as younger masons we got to tap into the jerry case bolts you know mm -hmm. we got to tap in to the bob davises the john tolberts the john brangles mm -hmm. the, the uh the your armstrongs these amazing older individuals who have so much wisdom and love to give to us right right, how, right. How, how, the masonry that's you're not going to find in a book no no and how can how can we grow to be grumpy past masters if we don't if we don't sit and learn from the experts themselves right right <laughs> the grumpy past master you know yes yeah <laughs> right right Yes. Uh, it's eventually, uh, in the states we have one year offices, right? Yep. It's kind of interesting. Yes. It's not that way everywhere. You uh, know? Right. Yeah. And like, I, I've spoken still, against that. Master has several years. Sweden, you hold an office for years. Um, orders I'm in esoteric. Like I've been Grand Master for seven years. It gives you a real time to build something and create yeah. something. I mean, instead of just like a one year thing. And both have their pros and cons. They do. But as, as for example, as keeping it local, as a worship master, by the time you learn what you're doing, you're done. You're already, yeah. uh, I, I would argue it's probably the same as, as above, so below, right? I would argue it's probably the same for grandmaster. 
by the time right. your year is up, that's right around the time you finally are getting the hang of things. I would say that except for Billings, dude. He he came <laughs> in ready. He came in ready. Right. Yes. He yes. came in ready, man. And he, 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 had, had, a good, he had an amazing. Yes, yeah. it's been it's been a wild ride this year. I've loved but it. But in general, yes. Like even the Golden Dawn, my old Golden Dawn tip, we did two year terms for Hierophant Master. Mm -hmm. And generally the first year is them figuring it out. Yeah. And then by the time they figure it out, they're like, oh, I'm running out of time. Yeah, yes. right, right. Mentorship would prepare them so they're ready in day one. Yes. You know, the one thing I'm, I've never been a past master of is a Masonic Lodge. Oh, you know, okay. I've never been a master of Masonic Lodge. Um, I'm hoping to do that sometime soon. And my plan when that happens is to model after Brangle and have a calendar <laughs> events, have a plan to yes. make the most of it, you know? Yes. Like, well, it's just, you know, we, we taught a session or I taught a session in, in, uh, the officer leadership training about, um, about your agenda, your agenda and the, um, and the, um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. It's getting late. Okay. I'm getting tired. I know. But anyways, so I, I had a session on, on the agenda and, uh, planning and planning and, and, you know, the agenda is for the lodge meeting to make it go smooth. So everything works out smooth, but basically at way before that, you should have your year planned. Mm -hmm. So your year is smooth. If you don't have every event planned at the beginning of the year, when, before you hit the ground, you're not prepared. Exactly. You're, you're, and that's not hard to do. No. Right. Right. If you do there's, that, there's basic things to know to expect. Everyone knows to expect and plan for it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's exactly what we were teaching. We did that. We And it sounds silly, I guess, but it's the same mentality. We did that with student council when I was in charge of that. We take uh, at the beginning of the year. That's not get, silly. We buy, we buy one of those giant, like a uh, desk size calendars. And uh, every, every month we would just go through it. What's, what's the events? What are we doing? And yep. I think that's, that's, I think that's great. Even if it's just as a, as a rough draft on, on a giant calendar. And right. It, flexible. It, it's flexible at that point. And then you can hone it out and publish yeah, it. Yeah. You have something, something's in pen that just won't change. And then you have everything else written in pencil in pencil. Yeah. Yeah. So that if it needs to change, it can. So yeah, there, there's some things yeah. just aren't negotiable. Like every, every year we do it this at this date kind of thing, or, or yeah. like grand lodge, like grand lodge is not negotiable. We, we're just going to go to it, whatever, whatever it comes up. But, well, but right. and Justin, I, I appreciate you brought the student council thing. You know what I mean? Because honestly, those kind of like, I learned a lot of my leadership skills from band. Mm -hmm. or, <laughs> right. You know, I was treasurer. I was secretary. I was drum major, like of a 245 piece marching band, you know? So nice. I learned and, and teaching karate, learned a lot of those skills from that, learned public speaking from that. Mm -hmm. Like you have to learn public speaking if you're going to teach 60 year olds when you're 13 yeah <laughs> yes for sure you know for but sure. even with those skills i went to college and got degrees and took public speaking classes and like gave myself the skills to do what i wanted to do right right and well yeah like you should always early, be honing, in, honing in. Education. we don't have that in high school anymore you have to go pursue it pursue i'm sorry you kind of we had two people talking what'd you say at the beginning paul uh, classical liberal arts education. Oh yeah, pursue it. Well, I got, that goes back to what we were saying earlier. Like that—that's probably something we should go back to at some point in public education. Well, what's funny? Yeah, that's what well, Reese trying to do, right? What's funny is that we're not doing it in in the lodge as well, which we should be because it's part of what we're supposed to be learning in in. We're we're doing an injustice by not doing that. Excuse yeah. me, I've got to get some aspirin real quick. You're good. <laughs> and on that note, though, there are several programs now to facilitate that. You know, there's the middle chamber program. Okay. That uh, Billings introduced from South Carolina this year. There's uh, Bob Davis's new book, uh, "The Search for Light," and it's all about bringing Masons to that. I love it. So it's it's it goes back to what we were saying earlier about um just just more avenues being 
okay. available. Yeah, you said Bob Davis. I'm, I'm pulling these up as you say that. That way, I can be sure I, I have it. Bob I can Davis. I can all send it to you later. Okay. Yeah, appreciate that. Sure. Yes. So, yeah, Bob um, Davis, new book out. He's the uh, basically the head of uh, Guthrie, Scottish Rite. Okay. Mountain of a Mason. You know, I've, like I've heard nine. good things about the the Guthrie Scottish Rite. Yeah. Uh, San Marcos Lodge is going to use his new book uh, as our new secret teachings thing. Go through it step by step. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you send that to me, please, I'd appreciate that. So something, something that I wanted to ask, excuse me one moment. Get back on format. And, and uh, well, no, not necessarily. Uh, Cause this is something, this is not stuff we usually talk about, but uh, this is not a, a, a typical conversation. I would think. Um, you talked about Gnosticism and, and having kind of a, a, a Christian background. Um, I, I, I'm curious kind of what conclusions, um, and if, and I also realize it's probably a, a deeply personal journey, right? Cause it's different for everybody, but I'm just interested just cause you're knowledgeable with your, with your, with your Christian background and your pursuit into Gnosticism and, and Hermeticism and, and all these other things. Yeah. Spiritually, where, where is this really, where have these rabbit holes led you? Like, like what, what, what ultimately, and I realize this is probably also a work in progress. Like we all are, but, but what conclusions has, has this led you to spiritually? That is a heck of a question. <laughs> no. That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do my best on that. I'm, I'm going to answer it in stages. Okay. On one hand, it's taught me that we're all the same. Every culture, every religion, every people, we all are human. We're all the same. We're all craving, looking for the same thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So by that, it's taught me compassion. You know? And through that compassion, that influences my life in the sense that, like, I don't get involved in division. I don't get involved in things that separate like politics, you know, yeah. I have my, my opinions. I don't care if Europeans are totally different from mine, you know, cause we're all, trying the same. we're doing the best we can. Right. Yeah. Yes. So that's one part. We're all the same. Uh, it's given me a certain amount of contentment, you know, that a true faith, not faith in the way that I had when I was young, not a faith in like a blind faith, but a, a trust in the universe is what I usually call it. You know, a trust that no matter what, no matter how bad, no matter what happened, everything's going to be cool, man. Everything right. is on your side, like a true faith. Yes. Um, and then love. My biggest aspiration now is just to treat and meet everyone I meet with love and try to be compassionate and understanding and conflicts arise, you know? Yeah. But just love because everyone's doing their best. Everyone's dealing with the same struggles. Everyone's got their own problems. So give them some love, you know, right. sometimes a and little think, thing can be the, the coolest. And, and I think that, you know, bouncing off that you know going back to the night that we met there was a little bit of conflict and and what what's interesting i was is, thinking about bringing that up too yeah right because, because actually that conflict made us closer right because we had that common conflict and then we we both utilized the 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 tenets of freemasonry and the tenets of you know what we what we believe in in brotherly love real brotherly love we were able to come back together and now we're closer. And, you know, there's, there's not somebody in the world that, that I would trust more than, than you right now. And so that's, uh, yeah, so it's, that's, Justin, well, yeah. I'm sorry, Justin, I trust you. Too. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was like, I'm, but, I'm, I'm, am I even here? Right now? But seriously, you know, that, that if it hadn't have been for, you know, that, that little bit of, of friction, you know, it, we wouldn't have stuck together so well afterwards. Right. You know, sometimes it takes a little bit of friction. You know, you rub, it's, it's like, 
is a weird way to 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 say it but you know think about when you when you have this new bar of soap and a and an old little sliver and you rub it together to make it stick together and then you know a week later it's it's one bar of soap right so <laughs> i know i know i, 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 I got to speak i got to speak to the masses you know that's <laughs> brother dennis i appreciate you brought that up i was thinking about bringing that up too is that like the conference we had is good it's growth and that's right. one of the lessons i've learned through occultism is like especially alchemy sometimes things you think are bad in your life are actually right. just stepping stones right learning steps opportunities and you know? it may feel terrible right then but years down the road you look back like what was i yeah. worried about well, was dumb. Alice, well and really in the oath it wasn't the, in the in the oath of the oh, yeah. abyss when you're trying to pass the abyss in the tree of life and go up to full enlightenment whatever the oath of the abyss one of those phrases is i will treat every phenomena as a particular dealing of god with my soul wow that's, wow. that's deep right that's deep so how about everything that happens to you is god dealing with your soul yeah what a world view well and and that's kind of what i was going to say in a way that because that happened it was tugging at me on the inside it it drew me to you to meet you to really meet you and so that it worked out great that way and and on another comment uh, another different uh, silly note last night a grasshopper came into my house right and and i'm sitting there looking at this grasshopper and i'm thinking do i throw it back out in the cold or am i just going to let it live in my house and do whatever it decides to do and so it's living in my house we have a pet grasshopper now because mm. i i am looking at everything thinking man that bro <laughs> yesterday i saw a huge grasshopper on one of my plants <laughs> right yeah so <laughs> And yeah. I've got a few plants here that can feed him over the winter. So, you know, if he lives that long, which I probably yeah, don't I don't think still. they live that long, but but still the, the intent is there that, you know, I just couldn't do it. Well, and I, that's I like entering like a Buddhist living. state of mind, you know what right. I mean? Right. Right. And, and, like, and I'm not doing this, but, occultism, but I'm really more of a Taoist. Right. Okay. You know, everything's going to change as opposite. Be patient, observe, love and try not to be rash right that's hard for me <laughs> it's hard for me that's that's it's hard for me too I was just that's thinking, why, as you said that it's like oh, that, that's else why we get so many if we weren't if we weren't a little rash we wouldn't get so many views i don't think but yeah well yeah, yeah. you know me i'm I'm pretty i'm, I'm punk rock <laughs> right right but i try to be honest it's the key yeah yeah yes. Well, and honest with compassion to where it's not just an ugly honest, you know, yes. there's, there's a difference and you can tell that with certain people. And, and that's one thing that we and should, yeah. yeah. I know. I think sometimes compassion is ugly, honest. Maybe, well, maybe this is me. An, sometimes you need brutal truth. Yeah. But yeah. If somebody's been, fun. yeah. If somebody's been held with kit gloves all their, all their lives, then sometimes they need it a little well, it's bit it's like in our uh, obligations like to brotherly counsel gentle mm -hmm. counsel right sometimes right. we might need to be kind of harsh yeah right and that is merciful yes and, i'll and, be i'll be real quick to tell somebody i just won't tell it in front of everybody yeah you know, the, i'll tell them the exactly life teaches us that right severity yeah. and mercy uh our two pillars Sometimes being severe, being honest and kind of harsh is actually being merciful because you're giving them right. what they hear. Interesting. You know? Yeah. I, re I really got to study Kabbalah more. I, I, I have, a, and I've said this before, I've started down this path, but the Hebrew has been a huge hurdle. So you, you uh, can't study it without the Hebrew. But like you said. So once we're done, hit me up. I'll email you my uh, intro to Kabbalah. Please, yes, it's please. Nice. nice. On board quick. I really appreciate that. Yes. Yep. Yes. I wrote it specifically for initiates to because with Kabbalah, you basically have to read about five or ten books before you understand what the heck they're talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're just reading like I have no idea what I'm reading. 
Yeah. Yes. So I wrote this little 70 page booklet with a goal of onboarding. So you don't have to do please. That. Yes, please. Cause I, I've, I've, yeah, I've, I I've started several too. books. I've started several books. And it's been the same thing. It's like, I get halfway no through and I realize I'm not Jewish and I don't know Hebrew. Yep. And uh, this is completely, <laughs> it's completely, and I don't mean that negatively. I'm just saying like, yeah. I don't have right. a background. Like there's no background to any of this. So yep. yes, please send that. Please. And really, and really we should all know a little bit of cabal at least. Every Mason needs to say a little bit because yes. all our passwords, yeah. our, our myth is from Judea, Judaic Kabbalah. Yeah. And without that, you're missing out on basically all the things it's trying to tell you. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Right? You never thought yeah, about I think is I've, that new to you? I've so, always no, read. no. Yeah, it's totally new to to from that perspective. But but really what really blows me away is is we were talking about like uh like 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 basically everybody that that came around and created Freemasonry as we know it and the alignment era was a, was a Paul Reina if that makes sense because they they had so much knowledge about such a a wide range of things that they could, that they, could that they could condense it into something right. that unless you know what you're looking for it's you don't see it like unless you right. had the background it's, it's not itself right, right. yeah yeah, like you could just take it at face value for exactly what it is and go all you, you live the rest of your life just just face value. Kind of like what we're talking about the esoteric and the esoteric. Like right. could we could degree. publish the Masonic degrees, it wouldn't matter because you're not gonna get it mm -hmm. unless you do it. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. And it the same way, exactly. Like you have to it, it, it hide the secret conceals itself. Yes, I think I think that and that's the way a, that I'm able. Oh, there yeah. is a true secret in Freemasonry. There is a true royal secret in the Scottish Rite. It's maybe not taught, but there is something there. I love that. Right. right. Like 32nd degree is you're called a prince of the royal secret. Like there's something there, dude. <laughs> There better be something there with a title like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I uh, the the way that I'm able to connect my Christianity with with my beliefs now today with all that I've learned um, is the Kabbalah, because I have to believe that the Kabbalah is what made Jesus the Rabbi, right? So he understood the Kabbalah, whereas the rest of the people didn't. And that's what made him the rabbi. And that's what made the other rabbis so afraid of him because yeah. he understood it and he got it and he took it to the world. And Absolutely. no, not everybody, not everybody understood it or grasped it. You know, he had his 12 disciples, but the, but everybody wanted it because they saw it in him. They knew it. They, you know, it's just, so yeah. that's, that's why I believe it's perfectly okay for me to believe what I believe and still be a Christian. And, and, uh, and run with with all the other things that I enjoy learning about within Freemasonry and without Freemasonry, you know, because Absolutely, man, because of that basic truth and and everything ties into that. Well, and that that's how I feel about uh, occultism, you know, yeah. and ceremonial magic, I, and truly ceremonial magic. Some people, a lot of Masons, get scared by that word. Right, Dude, we were yeah. founded on that. Like it was all built into it. And true ceremony, true ceremonial magic is based on Christian and Judaic Kabbalah. Like it's right. there's nothing to be afraid of. Like it's it's the priestcraft. It's what the high priests were doing. Exactly, and that's what it was. Was they were keeping the rest out, and so if they didn't keep it to themselves, then you know, look at look at Aaron. Why is he why is he mentioned in in the uh, in the first degree? The high priest. He had a long he was beard. The, he was the high priest? Yeah, he had a long beard. <laughs> I got this crazy beard. I couldn't. I couldn't do that if I tried. Man, <laughs> you can tie that thing now. You can almost braid it. But yeah, that's you know, I, I I get it, and I hope that you know some of the young brothers out there will will grasp onto that as well. And and uh, I just hope that through what all of us are doing, all three of us are doing. We can touch those brothers and and uh, and help them to to know that they're not alone. 
and yeah. and they don't need to leave Freemason. They just need to dig and find the right people to talk to, go to the mentors and get what you can from each one. And and then at some point you're going to find that one that he's well, got you. you he's you, the one. And also take from all of them, but keep the good, discard the bad. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, like exactly. Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, his martial arts system, he, he goes, I'm going to take all the good things from these systems, discard the bad. Mm -hmm. I love Bruce Lee. I love, I love the stuff so, I talked about. Absolutely. Uh, Brother Dennis, you said you wanted to talk about the seal behind you. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was, curious, yes. I was I curious about that. This is so, brothers know, um, I'm not a member at this point. But this is one of the coolest seals. Let me get out of the way. My, I don't know which way my computer is. Here. You're good. You this can, is one of the coolest seals. You can and uh, and I, I would love for, uh, for Paul to explain it just a little bit to us. And, uh, there's and a help lot to unpack. And help. Well, I know there's a lot. So I know that we shouldn't get too deep into it, but maybe just cause a little bit of intrigue and, and, and uh, get some people wanting to taste it a little more i'll, so I'll stand up word uh can i can we take a another like five minute break was that sure cool? yeah no problem you don't mind i don't mind at all more water and then, and then i'll go into that yeah yeah sounds good all right cool so that seal behind you the elo cohen seal that is from uh a 1750s 60s uh French Masonic Order, one of the first haute grades or high grade systems. Uh, without getting too long into it, there were a lot of high grade systems flourishing in Fran France at the time. This was the one that really brought ceremonial magic, Judaic Kabbalah, spiritual alchemy, and the Holy Guardian Angel all together into one system to where you'd go through initiations and you would structurally be given prayers operations, rituals as homework to wow. connect to your Holy Garden Angel with the goal of actually having the beatific vision. You know, seeing the throne of God, which is one of the goals. Wow. Of yes. That's the goal of this system. And knowing thyself truly. No say tipsum, you know. So that seal right there basically tries to lay out one way of looking at the world we could say so i'm going to zoom in so i can see it okay in the center you see a hexagram right mm -hmm. right the star of david but it's above below right six points that represents obviously all the judaic symbolism but also the six days of creation you know because the whole point of the yellow cone is they're trying to get you back to the first man adam cadmon before the fall okay you know to regain your position in the garden of eden wow in the very center is a w which can be a w it can be a double v on francais two v's it can be a hebrew letter shin you know it can be all these different things it represents the spirit you know the holy spirit the spiritual fire what they call in I buddhism know. uh Buddhism and uh, Tantra and Hinduism, the prana. Mm. Prana, Reiki, Holy Spirit, it's all the same thing. Right. And then it's surrounded by I-A-E, E-I-E, -E, which are syllables, right? And those are basically ways to iterate uh, a Western version of kind of like Om. You okay. Know, in, in true yoga, Om represents the syllable of the universe, the creation. It's every sound. When you say om properly, I'm going to do it actually. Okay. It's not om, it's a o m. A o m. And then silent. Similar thing being shown. It's also linked to e a o, ancient uh, Greek deity. So it's, it's every aspect of creation, birth death resurrection around that you see three circles right white red and black okay. and i i'm i added those colors in the original it was 
just a black and white stamp. But the white, red, and black circles <coughs> are to iterate the Martin tradition. Those three circles represent three aspects of man. So from Kabbalah, the spirit, the soul, the body. Right. You know, or neshama, ruach, nefesh, to be more specific. Right. So it's the three circles of man, God, and the universe. And that is where you operate. Like once you're initiated, you're going to work in those three circles to seek to open up yourself, open up nature, open up deity, and link those three. Yes. Around it, you have a B, A, B, that red part at the top. That is a sigil for the, uh, the divine, the eternal. At the bottom, you have what kind of looks like two X's, right? Yeah. It's small right now. We can zoom in another time. Those two X's can be a lot of things. They can be letters. They can be numerals. They can also be squares and compasses. They can be the uniting, like a St. Andrew's cross. Yep. They were a Jacobite order, which we can talk about later. The top is the crown. You know, the crown of man, the crown of God, the crown of the crown. And then around it are the banners that represent the tribes of Israel. So showing that it is a Judeo-Christian order. You know, in the yellow Cohen, you're basically studying Judaism, the entire system. Mm -hmm. But it results in a Christian illumination. Wow. And that shows, that's one thing we don't have in the States. We're only offered the Hiramic myth. Right. Right. In Brazil, they have eight rites. They have the Adoniram rite. They have the emulation, York, Scottish, rectified Scottish rite, and some more. No, <laughs> no account, you know. Right. Other rites, like the Yellow Cohen, you actually follow the Old Testament. So first degree, you're Adam. Second degree, Cain and Abel third degree Noah, like you're going through the Bible, wow. then Moses, then Zerubbabel, then Christ, you know, it's a much more dynamic masonry. I've read, I read of Noah in the, in the ark having a, a presence in older versions of some of the degrees. So that's, that's interesting just to hear that coming up like that. Yeah. Noah kite masonry was, a, was a huge thing uh, on the continent, meaning Europe. No kite Freemasonry right. was a really big thing. And to, to pierce one little veil, in one of the yellow cone degrees, you represent Noah and you're put into the ark. Similar kind of to our master degree, you're put in something mm -hmm. and yes. you figuratively stay there for 40 days and 40 nights while your body dissolves into the three alchemical principles of salt, sulfur, mercury, which are also those three circles, white, red, black salt so for mercury you dissolve until your soul releases and those are the birds that leave the ark okay. and what, and what comes out is a new man wow nice. interesting nice. very you interesting. Also see similar aspects in the old uh, rectified scottish rite and strict observance where the third degree links to the fourth degree and someone resurrects in the fourth degree hmm. i like and it finding light you know so yeah. there's wow so th there's there's a lot to unpack yes sir from, from what we're saying yeah here. there's yeah so all you brothers out there that see this and, and see it in fear you should actually know that it's actually uh judeo christian and and um yeah that's Absolutely. awesome well just like that's the pentagram, awesome right on like, a deeper level as people see the pentagram they think like witchcraft and satan right classically the pentagram since the 1400s has been a symbol for jesus christ right the pentagrammaton you know yeah the blazing star yeah it's a symbol of christ like it's not a evil satanic symbol that so only it, came from a couple bad books. Right. That's all it usually takes, right? Just a couple, couple right, bad like books. Right, like Leo Taxel's, uh, Leo Taxel's 
joke. You know what I'm talking about? Right, right. When he, when he try to say Masons are satanic and all this Baphomet stuff, mm -hmm. like it was a joke yeah. and it works too well. Later in life, he actually disavowed that. Um, the worship master, San Marcos, gave a lecture on this at the 150th anniversary. Later in life, Leo Taxel admitted publicly it was a joke, but the damage was done. Too people late. Yeah. Still yeah. Hold on to it. Just like when people quote uh, Pike and try to say he was a Satan. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. People, they, people they still. Use one sentence. They use one sentence yeah. out of the whole book. Yeah. Yeah. In Satanists today, they still they still try to use Baphomet, his imagery, as a which is interesting, right? Like they're doing it as a counterculture, you know. But yeah. Baphomet is actually meant to represent like a composite of the human being in reality. You know, it's so, not meant to be an evil image. Actually, mm -hmm. it's meant to show the the animal nature. Right. Well, it's it's a it's a very above. it's a very esoteric image, really. Like Absolutely. if you Elvis Levy drew it. Yeah, well that makes sense then. Yeah. And, and he was a Catholic deacon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right? Like a Catholic drew that. That's funny. Now, so, even today, like uh Pope John Paul II had on his desk Meditations in the Tarot, uh, a book written by Valentin Tomberg, who was a Martinist and a cultist. But like even the Pope was reading about the tarot. Interesting. Right. Or, or Pope Francis, he carries a stang. Have you seen his wand? Mm -mm. Right. Yeah. So I, I posted a picture today of me holding a stang. Okay. Let's it's look. basically a, a staff that splits to a Y with a metal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. comes from 13th, 1300s Germany when they, are, they had churches with Christ on a Y cross. And they're really brutal. You know, like you ever go into church, you see Christ on the cross and he looks all like clean and like abs and like, you know, <laughs> right, right. Those Y crosses, the, the Christ on the cross was bloody, gory, like painful. And that was to express the true sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know? So therefore it kind of right. fell out of use because people don't want to see something gory. Right. Yeah, yeah. Witchcraft started using the stain, but then Pope Francis brought it back and started using it. I see. Interesting. Well, like, and it's all about understanding symbols and their history, right? Yeah, so, and so, if and it's been said that you can, if a a a uh, Jewish person, uh, uh, Judaic faith, if you sit down with the tarot cards, you can totally unravel and understand the kabbalah if Absolutely. you just give yourself enough time and study them all you can understand the kabbalah just by having a deck of tarot cards so yes. it it certainly makes sense that the that the highest priest in the world would you know would have that right yeah, if he I, didn't I, it would I have lectures on, that, on the tarot yeah. they are in, intimately linked so tarot is another yeah, one of those would, things that has just has just got a bad rap over over the years. It's gotten corrupted. Let's put it that way. Like okay. it's right. it's devolved to people think it's just a divination system. You know, right. fortune telling. Mm -hmm. I don't use a tarot for that. Every once in a while, I might do a reading, but in general, the tarot is used to teach Kabbalah. Right. Interesting. Exactly. Now, those seventy-eight cards show the entirety of the universe, just like the I Ching in uh, Chinese Taoism. Hmm. Okay. Do you, you know? use do you use the classic cards? That's By what classic, I have. you have to define that. You know, in in general, classic people think the Rider Waite deck, mm -hmm. right? You know, like that's what we all well, think. Well, and that's and that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's that's what I have. Yeah. And the Rider Waite was made by a Mason, A. E. Waite. Yes, he was S. R. I. A. He was Golden Dawn. You know, before that, there was the uh, Renaissance style, but Waite basically codified the Golden Dawn system into pictures you know that's a golden oh. dawn. Yeah. wow so what, I, what i use i use uh robert wang's golden dawn deck because it's more it's more kabbalistic but you can only that. read it if you know kabbalah 
That's the thing. Right. I'll have Ooh. to I'll have to get that one. I didn't realize it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start a terror course soon. So very cool. I yeah. like it. We should I know we're getting late. We gotta wrap it up soon. Yeah. We should do this again sometime. Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. I, I had I had thought that thought had crossed my mind several times during this conversation. It's like we, we could we we've uh we've looked at several rabbit holes, like we've acknowledged they're there and they're interesting, but we haven't really gone down any of them yet. Yeah. So yeah, that's, I think what this what we ought to do is what we ought to do is define one uh later right. amongst ourselves and then uh educate ourselves and then and then jump back into it and talk about it because uh where you're already educated. Paul, we're still just novice, you know, we're, yes. that's why we had you on the show because we're wanting to learn, whereas you've been doing it for years and, and we wanted our, our listeners to know that there are people that understand the stuff that they're wondering about. So, <laughs> well, and that's but yes. cool about this podcast we just did, like I've done a bunch of podcasts, but tonight we didn't do talking points. Mm-hmm. Right. Literally- wrapped yeah exactly you know that was nice i I have found that the best masonic conversations are usually the unplanned conversations that take place after the meeting things like that and so i uh i like to some people really just want a general guideline to be prepared but if we don't have to have one and i always say even even if we have that it goes where it goes right right if we don't have to have it down on paper and with the conversation just goes wherever it goes that's what I prefer because well, that was tonight. Right. Tonight was free form. Yeah, I, I would love to come back with y'all and actually have a specific topic to dive into. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And we we talked about a lot of different topics tonight, but I think tarot would be really interesting to to really dive into that, or or Kabbalah, either Any, one. Maybe. Especially if you, especially if you send me that they all link into Freemasonry. I love it. Yes, like they do. Saying, like, the AU8 deck, the Rider weight was made by a Mason. And right. That came from... He, he was intentional and in, yeah, he was intentional in what he was doing. He, yep. And that's, that's, uh, maybe that's the last thing to kind of like make sure that I'd like Masons to realize is that Masonry is spiritual. Masonry comes from the occult. Masonry comes from Kabbalah, from Christianity, from Judaism, right. from alchemy. It can be anything to anyone, right? It can be just a philanthropic fraternity. But if you want to dive deeper, you got to hit those traditions. Yeah, Yeah. it's there. Yes. Well, well, Paul, do you have any... uh... The Hebrew letters will just make your masonry better. Like, imagine (laughs) going through and you say the passwords, you actually know what they mean. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, What are are your... What are your final thoughts based off uh, everything we've talked about tonight, Paul? I think I kind of just said it, you know, okay. I just want to make this <laughs> realize that we have a very rich history and culture. And if you're interested, reach out to the people who are doing this stuff. People like y'all, people like me, David Hill, uh, Bob Davis, Piers Vaughn, reach out to the esotericists and see what they have to offer. And try to find in your local community, right? Yes, people yes. you can get mentored by, like with OMS. I'm in Texas, but a lot of my students are international. You know, so they come and travel, hang out with me in San Marcos. We do initiations, we do lessons, and then I see them next year. Mm-hmm. You know, and they get a curriculum of what to do for a year. But reach out, and if you want more deeper stuff, it's out there. But you have to knock. They're not going to come to you. You have to not. And and like we said earlier, it's a lot easier to find now than it was 15 years ago. Yeah, the internet's rad. Rad and bad. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, fact check whoever you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the evidence. There's a lot of bunk orders out there. Right. There's a lot of weird stuff. And a lot of dumb stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dennis, uh, what are your final thoughts? Um, Paul, this has been great. Thank you so much. I, I'm very grateful, humbled that you came on our show. And and um, it, it has been, I think, a very enlightening experience for us, as well as, you know, anybody who's listening, they'll, they'll be able to take away 
a better understanding of the fact that it didn't yes our tradition is is one way that has come from the ancients but that's not the only way that's not the only path that came from the ancients yep. and so 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 freemasonry in 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 encapsulates so much more than just what you've learned to date so please get a book read a book listen to some podcasts listen to some youtube channels paul paul's down below on mine so we're <laughs> above he's below so because you know he equals both of us because we're not that worthy we're but, all, uh, <laughs> we're all no right you have but, stuff um, to teach me. i have stuff to teach you that's right but we we're, we all come together and uh, we learn from each other if we're open to it. If we're not open to it, that's okay. You don't, you, as you, you don't grow, yeah, as you grow in your spirituality and in your, in your, as you educate yourself, you start opening up to different things and different possibilities. And, and so we all do it at our own pace. You yep. know, so if you're not there yet, that's fine. That's okay. Enjoy the Freemasonry that you have. Enjoy, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, enjoy the journey. That's exactly right. It's it is a journey. So enjoy it. And um and we're here for you either way. All of us are here for you either way. And um if you do feel like you're on that island, reach out to us and we'll be happy to get you in touch with the people that uh that you're looking for. Yeah, because we do, we do know Justin a few. Perhaps his part. I want to comment something you said, Dennis. That was very wise. Okay, is that Dennis said something wise? He you know, did. don't start. Don't start. <laughs> I'm to, I'm to paraphrase it. Uh, very diverse, right? Like we we're saying earlier, hold two things in your mind, mm -hmm. opposing viewpoints. If we can develop that, those are the pillars. You will find the light between them right yeah you know be yes. able to be flexible and not be so rigid if we can do that in general our our world would be so much sweeter you yes. like water man right just like ancient christianity last rank a lot of my friends like in the punk community are like christianity sucks right because they only know the dogmatic side right and then i tell them i'm a christian and they're like what because i've studied the diversity of early christianity yeah. yeah yeah early christianity is nothing like it is today extremely diverse yes yes it went anyway through... we'll do that next time yes let's let's do that definitely <laughs> that's a whole Maybe that's, what that's a whole other conversation yeah yes yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just what's your rap what do you what'd you get from tonight uh i'll say that if uh, as a master mason if you get fulfillment out of uh just memorizing the work and, and teaching the work or, or comparing degrees you do you man you do you but if you we, we do we absolutely right. like there's That's no the there's no free masonry without degrees yeah so we right. definitely need that however if you feel inclined to identify rabbit holes and go down them and and translate old texts and create books and and things like that you do that too um there there is every organization takes all types to be a successful organization and freemasonry yeah. is no different and and Freemason. just because i'm sorry freemasonry is good at that it is yeah. it is it is freemasonry is good at that we as masons are not always good at that um and what i mean by that is just because i don't think there's anything beyond the words in the degrees doesn't mean that that is 100 percent accurate right and it doesn't mean that someone else is wrong for di digging deeper into that um right, right we we have to we have to acknowledge that opinions. exactly exactly everyone has different opinions and, and frankly if you think there's more to it and you're finding evidence that there's more to it. Again, you do you. Why? What? Who am I to say you're wrong when you're clearly digging up stuff, right? And so, uh, we as Freemasons, as as Masonic lodges, um, we have to understand that there's 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 a lot more to it 
than just comparing degrees in 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 our fish fries and and things like that. There's a there's a whole other world out there that that is and and frankly, based off our conversation, it's spiritual. It's, it's spiritual and it's something younger masons are coming looking for. And yes. so for us to dismiss, that's what they're looking for. They are. And if we dismiss it outright as a past master saying, well, that you're not going to find that here. You just crushed his, yeah. he crushed his hopes and he's probably not coming back. Right. Yeah. And that crushes the future. It does. It does. Right. right. Absolutely. You know what Freemasonry is opening up the dude. Like I have, I have such high hopes and I feel really good about the future of Freemasonry. Me too. Oh yeah. We're right on the edge. Yeah. He's becoming more open, more spiritual, cooler, you know, like I feel really good about the future of Freemasonry. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I too. agree. I agree too. You know, occasionally, if you're in a little country lodge in the middle of nowhere, they might just be the rigid old whatever. Right. You yeah. know, and that's why you got to travel and visit lodges. Yes. Well, we, we've Whenever said it. Whenever I travel, I visit. I mean, I've been to lodges in like fucking probably 15 countries. Yeah. You know? And you see the coolest stuff. I think that's the most important thing is to travel and visit. Because yeah. if you just, if you just, if you just, isolate your masonic experience to one or two lodges you might not ever find what you're looking for master's wages right yes exactly Travel, that's right see master's wages like meeting i met the grand master of the bahamas at the airport in the bahamas cool <laughs> like like we don't know each other but we instantly know each other mm -hmm. right you know, the masonic bond even if we did different rights the masonic bond is true and you can travel and you're instantly, you can trust this person. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, yeah. I mean, even, that's even if you, even if you're not outside of state, uh, I've seen, cause all, the only lodges I've ever visited are Texas lodges so far, but even, even just the Texas lodges, like Texas is so big, like the variety of the interpretations uh, and, right. and the but Texas and the, over Europe is huge. Yeah. Like, like you can see a you can get my point is you can get a lot of different experiences just visiting Texas lodges just just in your own jurisdiction, absolutely, but, uh, and uh, good and bad, and statewide I'm sure that's the same, nationally I'm sure that's the same, yeah, but nice. but it, you, these are experiences you'll never have if you just stay in your hotel room. Yeah, Freemasonry. Well, and the yeah. best Masonic nights is actually when you go to a conference, hang mm -hmm. out after the meeting. Absolutely. Right. That's where the cool right. stuff happens. Absolutely. That's where these conversations happen. Like, yeah. right? Yeah. This podcast is unique. We're, we're not really doing a pop. We're just talking. That is real. Right. Yeah. Like, what do you think the Jacobites and the kings of Sweden and Norway actually did their work? It was not in the temple. It was hanging out after. Yeah. Yep. And uh, exactly. I've said this before. I think the, the real work of Freemasonry happens after the meeting. Yep. When everybody gets together after, they may or may not go to a bar, whatever. It just depends on what the type of lodge and type of people. Mm -hmm. But they're getting together and they're having conversations, just like we're having right now, right? It's and, your motto on your screen right now, building a better brotherhood. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I agree. Yep. Well, Paul. I've kind of created friendships in foreign countries that are some of my deepest friends. Yes. Yeah. And that's the coolest thing about what Billings message this year, travel. Yes, I agree. And awesome. uh, I agree. I, I've traveled more in these last two years than, than I've ever traveled Masonically. And uh, I can attest just, just going and helping out the lodges you've never been to helping with degrees, visiting, giving presentations. Yep. Um, it makes a big difference. It so really when, does. When are you going to invite me to speak at your lodge? Let's have that conversation. Let's do it. I'd love to have you. Let's do it. And we, you want to visit San Marcos? You got a place to crash. Awesome, yeah, man. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Just gets Real. better and better. Let's do it. Cool, man. Um, but let's 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 put a bow on this for tonight. We uh, we uh we've been ranting for two hours. Yes, but it's been a good rant. It's been a good rant, and it's been it has, good. it has. But it's let's fun, definitely man. let's definitely uh after this we'll we'll uh pinpoint some some talking points and and uh, dennis and i will dive more into it we'll come we'll come informed for a, a more specific <laughs> conversation down the road cool. but paul uh i knew i knew this was gonna be a great conversation i uh 
I uh, have a huge amount of respect for you. I, I follow you on Facebook and I know you're extremely knowledgeable. So as soon as Dennis uh, made this happen, uh, I, I knew this was going to be great and it did not disappoint. So thank you so much for, for taking time out of your busy schedule. And uh, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you for being an awesome. Thank, thank, thank you, Dennis, for the invite and for your friendship. Absolutely. You said earlier, the way that it started yeah. and the way it's going. Right. We're right. better friends because of all that. Man. That's it. That's it. Yeah, That's what it. Freemasonry is. Yeah.